morning and welcome to Purpose for Life Ministry. We are so glad that you invited us into your home this morning. Please join the pastor and I as we declare that Jesus is Lord and God is great and greatly to be praised. Amen. We are always so glad to have you join us however way you are able to uh, view this video. Uh, the service and we pray that you would be blessed by the word and uh, whatever God is about to do in your lives. Amen. Amen. So would you join Amen. us as we affirm our faith as we always do because this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day we're going to be a blessing to God and to others. This is the day we're going to be victorious over anything that the world or the devil brings our way. This is the day we're going to be fruitful and effective in everything that we put our hands to do. This is the day we're going to have peace that the world didn't give us and the world can't take it away. This is the day we're going to be healthy from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. And finally, come on, this is the day we're going to let go and let God have his way. Amen. And we pray that you would do exactly that as well in letting go and let God be God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. We're going to get right into the word. We've already invoked the spirit of God through prayer, worship, and praise. So God is here. Amen? Amen. And so uh, if you would turn with me to the gospel according to John chapter 14. We're going to read verses 6 through 14. The gospel according to John. Chapter 14, verses 6 through 14. And as always, I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Beginning in verse 6, it reads like this. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, Jesus said, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Verse 12. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, let me say that again. Mm -hmm. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. Amen. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Let me say verse 14. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. 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 Praise, Praise the Lord. Amen. I want you to know that this is a two-part message. Uh, the Lord gave it to me a, a couple weeks ago, and initially I had uh, verses 13 and 14 as the primary focus for our message, but then he gave me this subject for today, and that is understand that your spiritual connections to Jesus opens many doors. Let me say that again. Understand your spiritual connection to Jesus opens many doors doors. Amen? Amen. And so we're going to look at that today and what that means and prayerfully you will grab hold of whatever it is that God wants you to know but I want you to know it starts with two things. One, this is a spiritual thing. Amen? Amen. See, Amen. We must know, we must understand that when we say you're connected to Jesus, Jesus is no longer here in the flesh. Amen? Amen. He has gone on to be with the Father. He's seated at the right hand of God. But he is here in the spirit. 
Amen? Amen. The second yes, thing is, know. you must be born again if you're going to be connected to Jesus. So the Holy Spirit is key and, 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 and primary for you to be connected. You must be born again. You must have the Holy Spirit in you in order to be connected to Jesus. But if you do, and if you are connected, there's many doors that will be open. John 10, 9 and 10 says this. Jesus says, I am the door. I am the door. All who enters through me will be saved. But then verse 10 says, a thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But listen to this. Jesus said, I came to give life. But what? That more abundantly. There's more than one door when you get connected to Jesus. There's more than one blessing that, that God has for us when you are connected spiritually to Jesus. There's many doors that are open because of your relationship in Christ. You hear what I'm saying? Amen. So let's look at this message. Jesus is preparing to go away. He's about to leave this earth. And the disciples, especially Thomas, had a question. He wanted to know, wait a minute. In verse 6, where are you going and how can we then know the way? All right? But Jesus is like trying to help them understand, look, there's a way that you can still be connected to me. Amen? Amen. Though I'm leaving. Mm. And how many of us want to know that way? Mm. How many of us want to be able to be in a situation where we know that though we can't see Jesus, we are still connected to him by the Spirit, and we still can have conversations with him. We still can commune with him. Amen? Amen. We still can have the fellowship and the joy and the, the peace that only his Spirit will bring us. We can have this. So uh, uh, the disciples, including Thomas, wanted to know, where are you going? Look at verse 6 in chapter 14. He says, Jesus says, I am the way. This is the answer to, matter of fact, let's look at verse 5. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen? Amen. Jesus is trying to say, listen, there's a way that I want you all to know that you can stay connected to me even though I'm not here in the flesh. And honestly, that which is in the spiritual realm is eternal. That which is in the flesh is temporary. So I'd much rather have Jesus connected to him in the spirit than in when he was walking on the earth. Because we know that that body was going to be gone at some point. We know that we won't see that physical form of Jesus at some point, even if we were back there. Amen? Amen. And see, mm -hmm. because they didn't understand the spiritual side of this, this connection to Jesus, they were worried about my, my Lord and my master, whom I've been following for three years, is about to leave. What are we going to do? How are we going to make it? How can we stay connected to the one who's about to leave us? Amen? Amen. And Jesus has given us the answers. So what I want you to do today is put on your spiritual caps. Amen? Amen. I need you to see what the disciples are going to be able to see as Jesus begins to reveal to us how to be connected to him. They needed clarity. They, look, and how many of us need to know sometimes when we're not sure about where, where we are with God and, 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 and how we pray and all the different things that is that uh, spiritual connection, how many of us really need clarity sometimes? To know that our prayers are not only getting through, but they're going to make a difference. I that not only, not only does God hear our prayers, but God is going to respond to our prayers. Mm. Amen? Amen. I like to say this is a need to know question. Where are you going and how do we know the way? How can we be connected to you? Amen? Amen. Mm. Have you ever felt like that where, like when you pray, like, am I praying the right way? Or, or am I saying the right things? Mm. You know, mm. am I uh, 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 doing something to block God from hearing my prayers or responding to my prayers? See, the connection to Jesus all is based on one, two things really, but one main thing, faith. Your faith believe in believing that he not only is there with you inside through the Holy Spirit, 
but he's listening, he's seeing, he's right there with you. You are connected to him in every way as if he was here. Only you just can't see him. Mm -hmm. Which means mm -hmm. you have to exercise your faith. Yeah. But if you exercise your faith in believing mm -hmm. that what Jesus is about to reveal to us, we're coming up on it. But if you exercise your faith on his word and what he's about to say, then you are going to be uh, not in encouraged today uh, and enthused today, but you're going to be blessed today because your faith will then move you to another level. You will begin to see things a lot more clear than where you were before. And that's what we want, isn't it? Amen. Don't we want to be able to have with assurance that I know that if God said it, I believe it. Mm -hmm. I know, I want to have that assurance that if I pray, I know without a doubt God's hearing me. Y'all heard me say sometimes before that, uh, in my previous messages, that sometimes when I pray, I look up with my eyes open. Because Jesus looked up when he prayed. Amen? Amen. And so when yeah. you look up, Jesus is looking up to the direction where he believes the Father is. Now, we know that Stephen, when he was stoned, he looked up, right? And before he died, the Bible says, and he saw the Son of Man standing at the right mm -hmm. hand of God. Mm -hmm. But he looked up because he was directing his attention to that which he knows is up there, but he can't see with his physical eyes. And what did God do? He allowed Stephen mm -hmm. to see. Mm -hmm. Because see, Stephen's faith was, I know you're there. Do we know he's there? Mm -hmm. yes, we do. do we know? Because see, Jesus came for what? To connect us to the Father, not to Himself. Our preacher, He's the one that is the mediator between mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. and the Father. The Father, God so loved the world that He gave Jesus so that we can now get back to mm -hmm. Him, reconcile mm -hmm. and uh, um, uh, what's the other one? Reconcile and I can't think of the other R's. Two R's. Uh, but anyway, but He brought us back to Him, to God the Father. Amen? Amen. So what we want to do today is looking at these scriptures. We, I want you to pray prayerfully, grab hold of understanding that everything that we're doing spiritually that is connected to Jesus will open many doors, not just a door. Jesus said, remember, I am the door. So we got to go through Jesus. We can't go around Jesus. We can't try to do it our own way. We can't take control over the things that is spiritually uh, 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 that is spiritual and think it's going to work. It's not going to work. When you try to put the world's views and the carnality of your mind into play and practice, it's not going to work spiritually. It might work for a while here in the world. Amen? Amen. Ain't no way. But is Ain't that no. what we want when God says, I have many doors? When God says, I have a life more abundantly for you mm -hmm. and for me? No, we want more. We want everything. And I say this all the time. Whatever God has for me, I want it all. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. As he reveals it, and he says, this is yours, I'll, I'll, I'll gladly accept it. Thank you, Lord. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So let's look at this. We need to understand that it's clear that Jesus is the mediator. Right? I want you to look at uh, Hebrews. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 9. Verses 11 through 15. The book of Hebrews, chapter 9. And we're going to look at verses 11 through 15. Amen? Amen. Now keep in mind, Jesus says what? I am the way. All right? Mm -hmm. There's no way you can get to the Father except through me. Mm -hmm. So how did he make that happen? Verse 11 says, But Christ, Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is not of this creation right mm -hmm. nor with the blood of goats and calves but with his own blood he entered the most holy place once for all having et obtained eternal redemption for if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of, of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the puring, purifying of the flesh. Let me read that again. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the mm -hmm. ashes of a heifer, mm -hmm. sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, 
how much more shall the blood of Christ, mm. who through eternal, mm. oh, through the eternal Spirit, offered Himself without spot, uh, uh, without spot of God, a uh, spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Now, before Christ came, remember Old Testament, they had to kill. Remember, we've all we talked about this before. In order to be a, make an atonement, you had to kill something. Something had to die. The wages of sin is what? Death. So Amen. death, something had to die. But they would take a, a <laughs> the blood of goats, and as you just heard, red, red uh, heifer or, or anything, and they would sprinkle it to purify mm -hmm. the saints and mm -hmm. the people of God. I mean, uh, uh, the things, the vessels and everything, right? And then they would uh, go in frequently, once a year, through the Holy of Holies, to make atonement, but they had to keep doing it. So then Jesus comes on the scene, and Jesus, one time, somebody say one time, one one time. shed his blood, one time, amen? amen, and paid for every one of us our sins, amen? amen? The veil that was separating us from the Holy of Holies, from God's presence, was then torn when he was crucified, from the top to the bottom. Amen? Amen? Now that's significant because the veil was so high, there's no way that anybody could reach up there unless you got some tools and ladders and stuff to rip it. But it was torn from the top to the bottom, not the bottom to the top. Because you could reach down at the bottom and try to rip it, and man can, then man can say, I did this. But God did it from heaven. Amen? Amen? And when God did it, he says, now this is to let you know there's nothing to hinder you from going or coming before me through Christ. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. This, is the, this is the way. This is what, how Jesus made a way for us to be able to get to him. So let's talk about the truth. Jesus says, I am the way, but I'm also the truth. Well, the truth is we need to believe that Jesus himself is the truth. Mm -hmm. There's no mm -hmm. other Messiah, there's no other sacrifice, there's no other little G God, because there's only one God, amen? Amen. amen? But there's only one who made the sacrifice for us, amen? amen. Now, the truth amen. is, we need to understand that, we need to believe that. And the only reason we're able to come to Jesus is because of this, because of the sacrifice. The truth is, number two, our living, because he says, I am the truth and I am the life. The truth is, amen, the word of God tells us this, that's the truth, is that our living is only in the life of Jesus. Y'all realize that, right? Mm -hmm. If you're not born again, you're not living. You're existing. Mm -hmm. You're here. You're moving around. Remember when they wanted, somebody said, uh, Lord, I'll follow you anywhere. Let me first go and, and bury my father. And Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. Amen. He says, you, if you're not born again, you're dead. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you can go bury the dead. But if you're born again, you are living. But if you're born again, you can only be born again in Christ. So our living must be in the life of Christ. So if you're going to be connected, and uh, Thomas says, how do we know the way? Jesus says, you must be born again. You must live in me, through me, and by me. And by the way, for me. Yes. Amen? Amen. And uh, that's the obedient part, for me. But in me and through me and by me is all the power of the Holy Spirit that is in you via Jesus. Amen? Amen? So we look at he is the truth because Jesus is the truth. We look at the truth is that our life is in the life or our living is in the life of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to look at, again, how... Understanding that these spiritual doors that are opening is only going to be through Christ. And it all begins with believing in what Jesus says. And let's go back there. In John chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. If we need to actually believe this and understand what that means. And I pray that when I share it with you that the way to God is because of what Jesus did on the, on the cross. He made it away. We should take, you know, uh, 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 we should be grateful mm -hmm. in the fact that he paid our sins and now we can talk to God. We can talk to our creator. 
Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. We can talk to our creator. Yes, we can. You know what I mean? Amen. We, yes. we have a relationship now that we're building with our creator. Amen? Amen. So let's look at John chapter 14, and let's look at verse 7. And it says, if you had known me, you would have known my father also, or you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Amen? Amen. Jesus is saying, listen, understand, I know it's the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but it's one. Amen. We are yes. one. Yes. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. How is that? How can that be? Jesus says, I am a clear representative of every attribute of the Father. I only say what my Father gives me to say. Mm -hmm. I only do what my Father's will mm -hmm. is to do. Mm -hmm. If I show love, that's because it's the love of the Father that's flowing through me. Mm. If I got a little angry, you know, you know that they call that, you know, that, that in, uh, 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 righteous indignation, that's because my Father is angry. Now bring that word. You see what I'm yes. saying? Mm -hmm. So everything you see in me, he says, is the attributes and the Father. Don't get caught up on this physical form. He said, because when I die and I get up, this is not what you're going to see. Mm. But if you see past the physical and look at my attributes, look mm. at how I love, mm. look at how I give grace, mm. look at how I heal, oh. look at how I deliver, mm. look at how I continue to make all things new. I give a, a troubled mind clarity. I give those who are demon possessed, I cast them out. This is all the Father's work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Amen. Look, verse 10. The, the, do not believe that I am in the, I mean, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but look at this. But the Father who dwells Amen. in me does the works. Amen. Everything I just said about what I do, it's not me, it's the Father mm -hmm. in me. Mm -hmm. But because we are of the same spirit, mm. there is no distinction between no. me and the Father. That's right. Amen? Amen. See, I know it can be a little confusing about how can it be three but one, and we might not understand that fully until we get to heaven. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, I mean, I know people try to explain, well, you know, it's just the, like the theory of the H2O. I even tried to use that one time. It's like H2O, water. You know, you can have solid. You can have rain, which is liquid. Or you can have evaporation, which you can't see. But it's all H2O. Three. Yep. Three. Mm -hmm. That's not, that's not going to satisfy who God is in the spirit, though. That's not good enough. That, that, that's just us trying to understand in our finite minds how the Father is the Son. And the Son is the Father. Amen? But what we really need to know is, and, and believe is that Jesus, are, are you connected to him in such a way that your faith is kicked in so good and so great? that you know without a doubt that the doors that you need open is going to open. Amen. Yes, Lord. Anybody need your doors open? Oh, yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now, keep in mind, he says, all who come through me, not around me. See, a lot of us try to go through doors that are closed <laughs> and try to open these doors ourselves and get frustrated because they won't open. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's because you're going around. You're trying to yeah. go around what God said to do. He says, no, stay spiritually connected. Listen to me. Let, you know, let, let me lead you and guide you with my spirit. Seek me diligently. Stay focused and meditate on my word, on the truth of God, on the truth of God's word. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Yeah. And then know that I'm going to direct you. You, your job is to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Mm. Your mm. job is not to try to figure me out, mm. lean that on your own understanding. Mm. Your job is to acknowledge me in all my ways. Mm -hmm. And he said what? I will direct your path. Mm. Yes. Amen. See, you don't have to worry about what doors are opening. You just have to be mindful and look for the open doors. And when you see the open doors, don't resist it because it's not the way you came. That's not the door you thought was going to open. When God says, no, I let this door open for you because once you get through it, there's other doors. Amen. Amen. See, you got to go through me first. Yeah. You got to get through the one door, the true door. Yeah. Amen. Amen. In order to get the other doors open. 
Yes. Uh, come on now. Hey, watch out now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you have this knowledge now, let's begin using our spiritual connection. Amen? Amen. Let's look at Romans chapter 8, and we're going to look at 31 through 34. Because we now know that the doors that are open is only because Jesus is the mediator, the go-between, between us and the Father. So as we look at Romans, I want to share this with you. Romans chapter 8, and we're going to look at verses 31 through 34. Jesus has already done his part. Amen? Amen. That's why the Bible says Amen. he has entered the heavens and is seated at the right hand of God. But what is he doing? while he's seated, seated. Well, let's look at verse 31 of chapter 8 of Romans. It says, What then shall we say to these mm -hmm. things? If God is for us, mm -hmm. who can be against us? Mm -hmm. He who did not spare his own son, mm -hmm. but delivered him up for who? For uh, us all. Oh, Amen? Yes, yes, yes. How shall he not with him also open every other door? I'm sorry, I just, I just threw that in there. But it says, How <laughs> shall he not with him also freely give us all things. That's many doors that are opening for the saints of God. He says, if I sacrifice my son for you, which is the most important thing and the most painful thing oh. that God had to experience mm -hmm. watching his only beloved, his only begotten son, to suffer, be beaten, and sacrificed for us, mm -hmm. If God says, if I did that for you, mm -hmm. for you all, mm -hmm. how will I not give you anything else? Oh, bring it. Yeah. How will I not open up any other door that is a spiritual door that will bless you? Mm -hmm. How will I not, as he mm -hmm. said in his word here, uh, give you freely all things? How will I, why would you not believe that I won't do that for you? Mm, right. Mm -hmm. See? See, this is where I'm saying we must believe that Jesus is the way. We got to go through Jesus. He is the truth. Amen. Amen. His word is his word. Amen. It does not lie. He does not Amen. lie. If he said this is what's going to happen, then your job is my job is to believe this is going to happen. Amen. And don't let nobody convince you it's not. Mm. Mm. Right. Your faith says, no, my God said that if he's before me, who's going to be against me? Mm -hmm. My God says, I will freely give you all things because you can count on it because look at what I did with my son for you. Mm -hmm. If you believe that I mm -hmm. love you that much, mm -hmm. that I will sacrifice, then why would you not believe mm -hmm. that I got many other doors opening mm -hmm. or that will open for you wow. as long as you come through me. Mm -hmm. Don't try to go around me. Don't try to force the door that's closed that I closed, God says. Don't try to open that door thinking that that's the door that's... No, look for the open door. All right? Yeah, preach, preach. So, understand that what God says, and oh, let's keep reading. I've almost forgot this. In verse 33, it says, Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is, it, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore, is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, and look at what, look at what Jesus is doing. Mm who also makes intercession for us. Amen. Jesus sitting at the right hand of God the Father, talking to the Father about us, about the things that we need or the things that he needs us to do or need the Father to approve of. Yes. yes. See, you hear what I said? Yes. To approve of. Yes. They don't work independently now. Understand that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus speaks to the Father. The Father responds to Jesus. Jesus sends the Spirit of God by the power of God oh, yes, to go yes, forth yes. and do His will. Bring it down. Bring it down, Pastor. The Spirit of God is the work of God. Mm -hmm. He does it all. Mm -hmm. You notice I say He. Mm -hmm. I didn't say it. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit is a He. Mm -hmm. The Spirit mm -hmm. of God has a personality too. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Just like Jesus has a personality, so does the Father, so does the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, yes. Amen? Amen. The three are one. So here's what I want to leave you with. Amen? Amen. Because this is no small matter. Y'all understand this, right? Yes. Amen. This sacrifice that God did blessed us to be able to go before God now and know without a doubt we got his presence or we got his ear. Amen? Amen. So we now can pray to God. Mm. Yes, we, we now can hear 
from God. Mm -hmm. And we now can come to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Number one, write this down. Let's use the privilege of this spiritual connection. Let's use this, this privilege. Uh, or you can say, let's use our privilege of this spiritual connection. 1 John chapter 5, mm -hmm. verse 14 and 15. My brother over here who has joined us from Colorado today, mm -hmm. this is one of his favorite scriptures. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all hear him, don't you? Yes, <laughs> Amen. Yes, brother sweet. Carl Robinson from Colorado, welcome uh, to Purpose you. for Life Ministries, and uh, we pray you are blessed. He always blesses us. Amen. When we sit down and discuss the word and, you know, just have that little food, you know, eat and meditate and eat that food, you know, Amen. chew on that word. Amen. Amen. Chapter 5 of 1 John, and we're going to look at verses 14 and um, 15. Mm -hmm. And it says, now this is the confidence that we have in him. This is the confidence we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, mm -hmm. he hears us. Mm -hmm. But look at verse 15. And if we know mm -hmm. that he hears us, mm -hmm. whatever we ask, mm -hmm. we, we, we know. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? We know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. He says, first of all, this is the confidence we have uh, 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 that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. But if we know he hears us, mm -hmm. and this is the key part, because when you're praying to the mm -hmm. Lord, when you're going before, the God, before God in prayer, one, do you have confidence, amen, amen. that he is going to hear you. Mm -hmm. Do you have confidence Ooh. that uh, what you're about to ask or what you're asking him, you mm -hmm. will receive? Mm -hmm. yes, he yes. says, because if you have confidence in that, it's only because you now know. Mm -hmm. You move from confidence or your confidence is built on your knowledge yes, of yes. knowing yes. that he not only hears you, he will grant you mm -hmm. yes amen. and amen. amen. Right? Be confident when you pray. Mm -hmm. Remember, that's the open door because now Jesus mm -hmm. has opened that door so you can pray. Mm -hmm. So be confident in it. Ooh, yes. Yes. Amen? Amen. Yes. In your faith, in your prayers. And then be bold. Yes, yes. I want you to go to Hebrews with me. And let's look at chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. And we're going to look at verses 14 through 16. And listen to this. Again, remember who Jesus is. Ooh. Seeing then in verse 14, we, we, the body of Christ, have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. They name him Jesus, the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Let's mm -hmm. hold fast our confession. Mm -hmm. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, mm -hmm. but, in, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. But look at verse 16. So in light of this, that's why he says, therefore, let us therefore, in light of what we just come to know that we have a great high priest, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus the Christ, mm -hmm. the Son of God, mm -hmm. who has passed through the heavens, mm -hmm. amen? amen, who has been tempted like us, oh, yeah. who understands us, oh, yeah. amen? amen, who knows that we're weak at times, mm -hmm. amen? Yeah. Now, he says, he can sympathize with us. Mm -hmm. And he says, and then he says, because of all of these things, he says, look, come boldly. So, 1 John said, come with confidence. Mm -hmm. Be confident in your mm -hmm. prayers. Mm -hmm. But Jesus says, and also be bold. Mm -hmm. Be bold. He didn't mm -hmm. say be arrogant. Mm -hmm. He said, be bold. Mm -hmm. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Mm -hmm. Look at what it says. He says, therefore, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain, obtain mercy mm. and find grace mm -hmm. and to help in our time of need. Mm. Mm -hmm. What we're looking for is the open door. Mm -hmm. What we're looking for is another door because now I need a door of mercy. Mm. Now I need a door that is going to supply mm -hmm. some grace. Mm -hmm. Now I need a door that's going to help me hear from God because I need direction. Mm -hmm. Now I need a door that is going to give me what I need to be healed from some sickness. 
Yeah. Now I need a door that's going to open that only God is going to provide. But he says, look, if you're confident in the prayer that you just prayed, yeah. then why don't you come boldly yeah. 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 and believe by faith that what you just asked, you one, know that he hears. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what he said? That's what he said, preach. And then he said, and if you know that, then you also know that I'm going to grant you what you're asking. Yes, he will. Mm -hmm. So let us use our privilege of the spiritual connection. Number two, let go and let God use you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let go and let God use you. He didn't save you for no reason. He didn't bring you and draw you into the kingdom just to receive but also to give and to serve. Mm -hmm. Look at uh, Hebrews, uh, or not Hebrews, look at John, the Gospel of John. Let's go back to where we were. Mm -hmm. Chapter 14, but let's look at verse 12. He says in verse 12 of John chapter 14, most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And greater works than these he will do mm -hmm. because I go to my Father. Mm -hmm. We got work to do. Mm -hmm. Come on now. He says, look, I'm going to go. I'm about to leave. Don't worry because I'm going to show you how to stay connected to me. Amen. Amen. I'm going to show you how to trust in the Lord with all your heart. I'm going to show you how to be confident in your prayers. I'm going to show you how to be bold when you come before me and know that I'm hearing Mm -hmm. and know that I'm going to respond. Yeah. And so when you come and you ask what you need, whatever that is, in prayer, through faith, he says, I'm going to give you what you need because you got work to do. Amen. You just got to let go and let God do the work in you and through you. Mm -hmm. See, God really wants to do great things. That's why he says greater works now, how many know that the works that Jesus did was great? Mm, amen. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He, he cured the, the lepers. You know, I mean, he, he, he cast out demons. Uh, 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 he saved souls. Amen. amen. I mean, we know. Jesus did a lot of great works. He said, but greater works you all will do than these. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to my Father. See, Jesus is saying, look. You might not can do a whole lot right now because I haven't yet gone and I have not yet sent you the power of the Holy Spirit to do the works. But when I go, mm -hmm. I'm going to send via the Holy Spirit the power of God oh, yeah. to come upon mm -hmm. you and to be in you. Mm -hmm. And you will be able to do greater works. You'll be able to do not only the works that I do, but greater works. We need to be about God's business. Amen. 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 Jesus at 12 years old, he, isn't that what he said? Don't you know I'm about my father's business? Ooh, yes, yes. Some of us have been in church for many, many, many oh, years. Uh -oh. And none of us, and some of us mm. have not yet stepped up to do any work. Mm. Oh. Amen. Amen. And I'm here to tell you with what you just saw, God says, now, mm. look, let go. Don't try to mm. do your own thing. Let me do it through you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God has opened these doors for us. And all we got to do is believe it by faith and trust in the Lord and mm -hmm. that he will give us mm -hmm. the words, even the words when we go to minister. Oh, you, you definitely need to see this. Go to John chapter 16 uh, and chapter uh, 7. Well, we only get John chapter 16, 7, 13, and through 15. 16, it says this. Um, verse 7 of chapter 16 of John. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Mm -hmm. For if I do not go away, the Helper, Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Drop down to verse 13. Mm -hmm. However, when he, you notice I said he before. Mm -hmm. When he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Mm -hmm. For he will not speak on his own authority, mm -hmm. but whatever he hears, mm -hmm. he will, uh, uh, we're, we're, we're say, uh, whatever he hears, he will speak. Mm -hmm. Verse, uh, where did that go? You only oh, you verse 14. 14. Uh, and, and he will tell you the things to come. Verse 14. He will glorify me, mm -hmm. for he will take of what is mine, Jesus says, and declare it to you. 
I'm going to go ahead and read uh, 15. All things that the Father has are mine, Jesus says. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. What God is just showing us right here, he says, first, when I leave, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. Amen. He's done that. We have the Spirit of God in us. Amen. Now he says, now listen to that Spirit. Mm. He said, because I will guide you. He says this, uh, and if you go back in verse uh, 13, and however, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Do you know how many times that if you just take a moment, be slow to speak, quick to listen, mm. slow to anger, Ooh. and just allow the Spirit of God to Ooh. minister Ooh. and to guide you, you will hear God. Mm. And God will speak to you mm. because you're looking to hear from God. Mm. See, that's the key. Are you looking to hear from God? Because, again, God will direct us if we're not trying to do our own thing. It's only when we ignore the Spirit of God and we try to make it happen our own way mm -hmm. that God says, okay, well, go ahead. I'm going to sit back and wait for you to do your own thing. When you're done, I'll be right here. You'll come back to me and I'll still be here. I'm not going to leave, leave mm -hmm. you. Look, I'm not going to leave you nor forsake you. I'm not going to give up on you. Mm -hmm. I'll be here when you find out it ain't working your way. Mm -hmm. That's right. Let go and let God mm -hmm. use you. Uh, go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, because this is the one I believe that I want you to see about. And when you're about to be used by God, don't rehearse what you're going to say. Amen? Amen? Matthew chapter 10, we're going to look at verses 19 and 20. Verses 19 and 20. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you may speak or should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. Mm -hmm. For it mm -hmm. is not you, here we go, mm -hmm. who speak, but the spirit of the who? Of your father mm -hmm. who speaks in you, in you. See, Jesus says, I don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Mm. And don't you believe that when I go, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit? And if you obey me and if you love me, we will come and dwell in you. Mm. If you believe all of that, then you, uh, you got to understand that you are connected to not just the Spirit of God, but the Father and the Son in you. And when you take time to look and to listen and to be slow to speak, and allow God to guide you through all truth. Amen? Amen. He said that the spirit of truth will guide you. When you do that, you will hear the Father speak through you. See, I know it's hard because sometimes we want to pray to Jesus. We should be praying to the Father Ooh. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. See, yeah. I mean, God said, Jesus said himself, pray the Father. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. I, he said, I, I'm not going to pray for you at this point because I've given you what you need. Mm -hmm. He says, but now you can pray mm -hmm. to the Father. Mm -hmm. You just got to come through me. There you go. Man. Amen? That's the connection. I'm the mediator. I'm the go-between. Amen? Amen? I'm just as important to you as the Father. Yes, yes. And the Father is as important to you as the Son. Amen? Amen? Amen. And all of us, the three, are all connected by the Spirit. Amen. And that Spirit mm. is in you. Amen. He says, study to show thyself approved. A worker who needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Don't rehearse it, though. He says, don't trust your own memory. Mm. Mm. Amen? Amen. Amen. I mean, look, I've been there. When I've been up there and I try to memorize something mm -hmm. and I would be trying to, to, to speak God's word and mm -hmm. it's like, uh, 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 you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And God says, don't worry about that. He says, don't, don't, no, I'll give you what you need to say. Amen. When you go to minister to somebody else, when you go to witness to somebody else, all you got to do is study the word of God. Amen. Get the word of God in you. Mm -hmm. You got the spirit of God in you. Mm -hmm. He says, if you got the word of God in you and the spirit is in you, I will then guide you by the word. Mm -hmm. yes. My word will, you know, what he said, my, my word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Or thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Mm -hmm. A path. 
a direction. He says, my word will guide you. Amen? Amen. And lastly, let God open doors and not you. Mm -hmm. Let God open the doors and not you. Let's go to Revelation. This is a familiar scripture. These are pertaining to the seven churches. Mm -hmm. But we want to pick up on one church particularly. And that church is the faithful church. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. We're not going to talk about the co-op church. Amen. We ain't going to talk about the carnal church. The disobedient. We ain't, we ain't. No, we're going to talk about the faithful church. Amen. Isn't that where we are, right? Yes, well, Isn't that yeah. where we're striving? Amen. Isn't that Amen. where we're striving to be? Amen. The faithful of God. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 8 of chapter 3 of Revelation. It says, I know your works. See, I like Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, I know everything about you. I know what you're doing. I know what you've done. And I know what you're going to do. And I'm calling you faithful because I know you. Amen? Amen. He says, I know you work. See, I have set before you an open door. And no one mm -hmm. can shut it. For you have little strength, have kept, oh, you have a little strength, have kept my word and have not denied my name. Mm -hmm. He says, through it all, through all the persecution, through all the mocking of your God, who is my father, and through all that stuff that you had to go through, I know it was wearing you down. But you had little strength. And that little strength was enough for you, as he says, you have kept my word. And because you have kept my word and have not denied my name, mm -hmm. I, not you, have set before you an open door that no one can shut. This open door is what God says, this is where you can go in and out. Mm -hmm. And it'll be open. It'll stay open. Because you're going in and out through who? Through me. Mm -hmm. You are spiritually connected to me. And when you're connected to me, that door that I set open, no man can shut. Mm -hmm. You're never, ever, ever having to worry about your salvation if you are called the faithful church. Amen? Amen? If you have not denied his name, mm -hmm. if you had little strength, but you made it through. Mm -hmm. That song, so glad I made it. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. That, that, that's why he started to sing that song, because he made it through. Amen? Amen. And it might have been trying, and it might have been trying for you, but you made it through. And you're going to make it through because you're spiritually connected to him. Yes. We just got to be patient. Yes. Yeah. We got to be alert mm -hmm. and know that God will open doors for us mm -hmm. that will glorify him and Jesus. So listen, remember, there is one spirit that is the father, that is the son, mm. and that is in you. Mm. Amen? Amen? This is the Holy Spirit that we love and loves us. So understand this, your spiritual connection to Jesus will open many doors. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this time and for this message. We thank you, Lord God, that you encourage us to stay connected once we get connected spiritually to you. Mm -hmm. And that because we are spiritually connected to you, mm -hmm. many doors are opening because we have gone through the one door that is significant and is most key mm -hmm. for our salvation and for our life, mm -hmm. that you will give us life more abundantly, which is many doors mm -hmm. that is available to us. Mm -hmm. And so we thank you for this message. We pray, Father, that everyone under the sound of my voice, you will encourage, mm -hmm. and you will begin to show them those open doors, Lord God, that maybe they have not yet found or seen, uh, maybe tried to go a different route to get a no open door, but Lord, show them the one that you opened, for them, beginning with salvation mm -hmm. and then moving into the abundant life. And when it's all said and done, we'll always be careful to give you the praise. Mm. In Jesus' name we pray mm -hmm. and thank you. Amen. Amen.